Steve ripped the spokes right out of the hub of his HED wheel. <laughs> Get this. No spoke holes. And I gotta fix it. Keep watching and I'll show you how to do it. Welcome to the worst case scenario. Now this will be very interesting. How do we fix it? So I'm gonna make a quick list here and it'll explain the steps that I've taken. First thing is strip the donor wheel that he gave me. It's an OEM HED wheel. Next, we'll prepare the HED no spoke hole tubular rim, which we'll call a tub rim. Third is we inverse the spoke lengths for the donor hub flanges. Next, we're gonna try something a little different with our Shimano disc lacing for lower spoke hubs. I'll show you how to deal with losing nipples in the rim. Then we're going to identify and rectify lacing errors. And lastly, we'll be truing and tensioning by touch. We're going to start by stripping the donor wheel. As always, we're just going to start on the uh, lowest tension side. Okay, I lost a nipple in the rim, and uh, this one's easy. Just bang it, and uh, eventually it'll come out, fall out through the valve hole. We're going to separate the disc side and non-disc side spokes. We'll clean off our hub. Although unnecessary, I'm going to measure the overlock nut distance. Okay, next we're going to prepare the HED tubular rim. I put this on my stand and we're going to try to let gravity do its work here. But of course, we're going to run into problems. So at this point, I'm just going to show you how you can secure that nipple with needle nose vice grips. Now I found that uh, one of these nipples had it, it just wasn't turning, so I guess it had thread locker on it. All you do is just heat it up and it'll come loose. So what I've done here is I've just removed all the loose spokes, the spokes that are no longer in the flange, and I've replaced them with these spokes from a kid's bike that I took apart a long time ago. And now what that's going to do is just ensure that the nipples don't get lost in the rim. And that way we can access them much easier when we start lacing in the new hub. So I'm having trouble with the rim because the spokes and the nipples are being pushed up and I can't access them to loosen them. So what I've done is I've put this on my stand and I've just put something underneath to support it. Take all the weight off. So at this point here, I've gotten most of the spokes done and replaced with small spokes. I'm just gonna take it off the stand and I'll just let gravity do its work. The weight of the hub will pull the spokes down and give me easy access to the nipples. And there you go, you can see gravity pulls it right out, the nipple stays in place. Here we go. We have our nipple secured and we're gonna take a look at the broken hub. And look at that, the <laughs> The, uh, the flanges are ripped right off. 
And here's our donor hub, which we already saw. It's an HD OEM hub. And I'm going to show you one of the first problems that we're going to run into here. And it deals with spoke lengths. So what we're going to have to do is inverse the spoke lengths for the donor hub flanges because I'm ensuring that the spokes on this side aren't going to be too long because they're not the same hubs. And experience has taught me that disc hubs should be basically the same length of spokes. Since the, the original hub is not a disc hub, the non-drive side is going to have spokes that are 2 millimeters longer. So I'd rather have those 2 millimeters on the drive side of the disc hub and have higher tension on the disc side of the hub. So next we're going to do a little variation on some anal disc lacing. Now I have my method, which is to insert the key spoke first on the drive side and then count the holes over on the, the disc side so that I can insert that key spoke, which is what I'll call it in this case, into the opposing hole at the valve hole. Now we're going to try a variation that I got off of a video from Shed Boy. Okay, anyways, uh, what he does is he inserts the disc side spoke differently, and I'll show you here. So we have our drive side spoke installed, and we just find our opposing spoke hole on the disc side, and we slide it in with the head facing inward. Now, what this shows us is the cross spoke. So we're installing the cross spoke first and then when we do our cross lacing pattern we would have to invert. So instead of over, over, under for a three cross pattern we would do under, under and over to compensate for the fact that we inserted the cross spoke first. So we've inserted our key spoke into the rim now we're going to do that second one and it will bring us to our next problem and that's going to be losing nipples in the rim. In this case it's a big problem because there are no spoke holes. So what we do, and I referenced a few videos on YouTube, so what we do is we thread into a nipple another spoke and we cut it very very close to the nipple so that there's a little bit showing. And that's so that we can throw it into the rim and use a magnet to bring it over to the correct spoke hole. And there you go, just a little bit sticking out. We use that magnet, it pulls it right out. It only took a few minutes. Now we remove the piece of spoke. Now I'm going to do this differently because I had a problem. I didn't support the rim. Now I put my toolbox underneath and I'm going to use that to support the rim. And what I've done is I've just skipped the, the initial lacing. So the, the first sets of spokes, I've just skipped over that because it's pretty generic and it's unnecessary in, in this particular technical video. We're going to move right over into the cross spokes. Now because this wheel is an OEM wheel, it was designed for a spoking pattern of one cross, so we're just going to replicate that. Okay, so we're going to start our cross, and this will bring me to my next problem. I'm going to have to identify and rectify my lacing errors. So what I did here was I tried to do two cross, and that's probably just habit. I almost never build one cross wheels. I just fix that, and we move on. Now, one cross doesn't seem like it'll be enough, but this is an older wheel. It's a tubular wheel. It's It's been in service for quite a while and it wasn't even the, the build that failed. It was the hub. The hub flange just gave. It literally broke off almost like uh, it was just ripped off like someone did with pliers. <laughs> 
And there we go. We're just simply trying to engage a few threads on the spoke with the nipple. And then we can grab our spoke wrench. And that'll do the rest of the work for us. And that will bring me to my next problem. <laughs> ah, can you see it? Okay, I'm gonna take great care in getting those first few threads onto that spoke. Now the reason I'm showing you this is so that you can see that taking your time is going to help. Now, of course, I've just made a mistake here. Let's see when I figure it out. Okay. So here we go. I, I've just identified and will soon rectify my lacing error. So I did all that work to lace it in and I put it into the, the wrong hole. <laughs> so as you can see, there, there's a little too much slack because it's in the wrong hole. And what I'm doing with my thumb is I'm just, I'm taking the slack out. And I'm really, really hoping that there's no spring action and there wasn't. So I'm just gonna remove this uh, short spoke Put it into the other nipple. So now I'm going to move along and continue lacing. You just simply fix your issues and move on to the next step. If you have to go back, it's better to do it immediately than to figure out after five or six lace-ups that you've made a mistake. Now for a normal wheel, it's not such a big deal, but for this wheel, since there's no spoke holes, it's a very big deal. All right, okay, we've done our first cross side. And here's another problem that I ran into. I have to bed my spoke. So if you bed the spoke, it's going to add the slack that you need in order to reach the nipple properly. And of course, tension the wheel properly later. Now well, there's something we have to pay attention to, and that's making sure we've actually engaged those threads. Because all it takes is a little flick and that nipple's lost in the rim and then you gotta start trying to pull it out and it can be a pain. It's a lot easier when there's no spokes and no hub lace to it. But when there is, it becomes a real problem. All right, I fixed it.
Now, here's another problem I ran into. I didn't really lose this nipple in the rim. It, it just kind of got stuck in the spoke hole. So all I did is I took that little piece of cut spoke and very, very carefully threaded it into the nipple. There we go. Just pulled it back out and very carefully threaded that spoke into that nipple. Now, because we're getting to the last spokes, the, a lot of the slack is gone. So it looks like there's a big bend there and that's the only way for us to reach that nipple. Okay, here we go. Last spoke on Steve's HED rim. Very carefully bend it down, engage those threads. All right, let the, the spoke wrench do the rest of the work. Okay, we're gonna say thanks to Shedboy for his uh, contribution to our low spoke count lacing using the Shimano rear disc lacing pattern. If you want to see what I'm talking about, I have a video for that. So now we're getting into the truing and tensioning by touch. So what I've done here is basically nothing. I don't have any spoke holes on the top of the rim, so I'm just going to throw it into the stand and cover all the exposed threads. So I'm just going to tighten up each nipple and try to find a uniform point where we can start tensioning. So there you go. We're just going to leave like a teeny bit of thread. We're just going to do that all the way around the wheel. So we've covered all the exposed thread. Now it's time to start adding some tension to the wheel. I'm just gonna go around, I think it's four turns all the way around the wheel and see where I'm at. Okay, we've achieved that, but the, the wheel is still loose. There's still a lot of slack in the spokes. I'm just gonna go a few more turns again, and then check the tension. The tension's up, and we're just gonna look for these super loose spokes, because it's always gonna happen. And we're gonna tighten those up. Try to get it to uh, an even tension. And this is how it looks. Okay, so we've tightened up our loose spokes and this is where we're at. We wanna dish it to the drive side. I flipped the wheel in the stand just to give an idea of where the, how, what the dish is. We've done a little dishing and it looks pretty centered. Now we're just going to do our radial truing, look for hops. Right there we have a low spot. So 
So we'll just move on over to our spokes and we'll just touch them. Find the loose ones. So I've gotten that hop out, and now we have a big lateral wave. You can see there's one or two offending spokes here. It's just a matter of touching them and seeing who's loose and who's tight. So there we go. We found our offenders and we just tighten them up. It's gotten a lot better. So now we found another little lateral wave. And there we can find our loose spokes there. Just that one spoke is loose. Tried a little bit of the, the plucking, and you could tell a bit of a difference. So we just tighten that one off, and look how nice it is now. Wow, this is a really nice rim. So we went, we de-stressed, and now we're just going to check the dish. And remember, we can bring up the tension by dishing. So we know we have to bring the dish over to the drive side. And that's really where we need all the tension anyway. Now on this build, what I'm doing is checking the tension on the disc side. I want to make sure that the tension is perfectly uniform or as perfect as I can get it. And it seems to be so. There we go, quite uniform. There we go, HED wheel complete. We have our donor hub in there. We have our Shimano lacing. It worked out quite well. I hope this video helped you out and Feel free to subscribe, like, and comment, and definitely ask questions. Thanks for watching, and there's always more.